Ken Spriggs here with part five of my uh, 2001 Discovery build. Uh, working on the interior and um, in this video, I will complete the pod bay, which turned out fantastically if I do say so myself. Uh, so uh, I'll be working on the lights in the ceiling of the ship. Also uh, lighting up the um, maintenance corridor on the right side and finishing up the um, lab area on the left with the lights too and getting everything all put together uh, for a final review of the pod bay so all right let's go take a look all right so I'm working on some light boxes for the top of the discovery ceiling and as you can see, I beveled out, much I showed you before, I had to bevel out these areas so that they'd be thinner where the windows are. And then I have some clear styrene right there. So initially I made this light box, which all I did was I took some sheet styrene, cut it to be the size of this area. And then I had some thin styrene or wide styrene stripping and I just used it for the sides. So I put it on there and tested it, but it's, it's thicker than it needs to be. I don't have to have it that far away. So I made a second one and here it is right here. And this one, I used the same sheet styrene, but I used some thick square stock and I just did it around the edges to just give it a little bit of a lip to put onto there. And that's gonna be five minute epoxied along this edge right here and then light blocked of course and then of course there's a square in the top for the mega smd which are right here show you those very very bright probably blows out the camera a bit <laughs> and this is a strand of four of them from evan designs they're all four wired together into one connector which is great makes it a lot more convenient so that's the design I'm gonna go with, and this one I'm not. So let me show you how I made that. It's pretty simple, but I'll, I'll go ahead and show you it. So here's a piece of the thin styrene that I cut out to be the same size as the other ones. And I have a little dot in the middle to indicate the, um, the center for the SMD. And then all I have to do, let me, um, let me just mark that off since I already Did it on the other ones just to kind of have something to go by. And I'm just going to put it in the center so the light will shine over both of these. And I'm going to have some cotton fiber fill in there to diffuse the light somewhat. So, okay. So now the first thing I do is I just use my Dremel and I have this little tip here just to kind of start that hole. Sorry. Okay, and then uh, clean out just a little bit of plastic that was melted from that. Okay, so I have the general square. All right, and then I just have a square needle file, which then I just go in and square off the edges. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just close enough for that SMD to go down through. And then it'll be glued in over top of it with a five minute epoxy. I'm not gonna put epoxy over the SMD. I'm just gonna put it on the, on the outside. Okay, clean that out. It's better if it's a little snug. Because then I don't have to worry about it flopping around while I'm trying to put the five minute epoxy over it. So here we go. Okay, yeah, it's so pretty snug. Not too bad. 
but I can I can readapt that before I glue the SMD into it. But I just wanted to get that hole in place. Okay. All right. Now, so all I have to do is put the stripping around it. So rather than measuring it and cutting it, this is all I need. And then I use Plastruck bonding, which is really quick. It dries really fast. And let me just show you what I'm going to do here. This goes together real quick. So I just start with an edge. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect because it's not going to be a surface you're going to see. It's just going to be a, um, a light box to contain the light. That's all I need. All right, so this stuff goes on real quick, and it goes on with capillary action. All right, so it's all ready to go. I literally just put it down on there, and it's ready to go. So now all I have to do is take my X-Acto knife, cut off the edge. And then go ahead and do the next part. And for aesthetic purposes, I do want it to be kind of straight, you know. <laughs> Doesn't mean I have to be sloppy. Yeah, and that sets up right away, which is really nice. Okay. I just blow on it for a few seconds, and it's already pretty well set. You can even press it a bit, and it will hold it even better but it's that's good enough all right cut that off okay now what i want to do is i want to do this side because i want to save the bottom no particular reason <laughs> And actually what I want to do to make it easier than cutting a piece that fits right in that spot, I will simply cut off the end of this so that it's the thickness of the stripping. So this way all I have to do for the last one is stick it up against these two pieces. Go, as you can see okay all set okay and then just cut off the last piece and there's my little light box and it's a little bit off on some of the ends but it doesn't really matter the important part is that this part is gonna shield it so when I put it over top of this right here, it's bigger than the, the opening in the resin. So when I put five minute epoxy all around that and I paint that black and mask it, all the light's just going down. It's just going straight down. So, all right. So that one's done. I just have to glue the SMD into it. The other one is ready to go. I just got to make one more. So, okay, uh, let me get those done and then I'll show you how that's uh, going to look with the lights. All right, so I finished the light boxes, as you saw from the previous stills. Here's all four of them. And I used five minute epoxy to adhere the uh, Mega SMD into the box. And there's the clean SMD in the inside, as you can see. 
and I didn't want to get any epoxy on top of that. Uh, and then the light box is all white inside, so once I paint black on the outside and I get it glued onto the back of this and seal that off with some five minute epoxy, all the light is going to go straight down through and come out through the bottoms. So um, I started to put in some diffusing material. Um, I don't think I explained well enough in my last um, clip about the carving out of these channels. I might have done so in a previous video, um, but this resin piece is pretty thick, as you can see. I think it's about an eighth of an inch thick. So it's pretty thick. And because of that, the openings here for all the light panels were just as thick. So when you look at it at an angle, when it's kind of hard to do it this way, you would see the, you would see how thick that was and it didn't look right. And whatever diffusing material I was using, it would not sit flush down against it. Like you can see here, this looks good. But what I had to do is take a Dremel and I had to Dremel out a good bit of material around all of these openings in order to make it almost flat where this material was gonna be. Um, and I'm gonna have one light in each of these and each of these has two panels that are being lit up for eight total. Um, now, what I've done here is I've glued in the material that's called uh, vellum, vellum paper. And what this is, is I get this at Hobby Lobby. It's real cheap, it's 59 cents. It's a translucent piece of, I guess it's paper, but it's almost plasticky. And it is acid free, which is good. So I don't think it's gonna yellow over time. So that's important. And, um, and it's paper, so I can just cut it. And it's really good diffusing material. It really catches the light. So what I did was I cut out the pieces and I used some CA glue and I just dabbed around the edges of where I was gonna glue it so it, it wouldn't get onto the vellum where it's gonna show through. And I put down a piece and glued it. And then I double layered it so I put another layer over top of that once it dried. Because uh, it gives it just a little more diffusion to take away that um, hot spot of the light since the light's in the middle. And I still am thinking about using a little bit of cotton inside. Once I get these on and test them, I'll see how that looks. But I could also stuff a little bit of cotton in there in order to diffuse it even more. All right, so these are all dry. So I'm ready to go ahead and do a test of the light boxes and put them on there and see how they're all gonna look. Now, what I did for the long one, uh, because that's a bigger area and I really want to diffuse that more. Um, there's two things that diffuse, there's a couple different things that diffuse light. Two of the main things that do it are going to be material like the vellum that's in between and catches the light and disperses it, or distance. So the further away this light is from where you're going to see at the opening, the more it's going to diffuse. So I made this a little thicker than I made the other ones just so that this would be a little further off the surface in order to give it a little more ability to diffuse. And again, I, and it gives me a little more area too in here that I can put a little more cotton in and allow that light to diffuse better. So it spreads it out a little evenly for this backlight here rather than having a hot spot in the middle. So, okay. One other thing I noticed is that when I hold it up to the light, you can't really see it here, but um, because I hollowed this out, slight little bit of light leakage coming through some of the resin because it's thinner there. So what I'm going to have to do is carefully light block and paint some black over around the edges of this, of each of these, and across the center so it doesn't have the light coming through. So let me go ahead and hook up these lights or tape them in place and just kind of see what they're going to look like at this point. All right. All right, so I have them just taped on the top, as you can see, and it's a pretty slim profile, not too bad, nice and thin. I don't think there's a huge amount of play between the pod bay and the cockpit on top, but all right, let's go ahead and turn it on and take a look. And again, it's probably going to kind of blow it out with the camera, but all right, so I can definitely see still some hot spot right in the middle of here. 
and a hot spot a little too forward on these so I think I probably need to pull these back a bit to center them over the center the box itself not the light uh, to get it in the middle and I'll still want to put some uh, cotton in there to to diffuse that a little better so let me do that and see how that's how that's gonna look all right so I tried a little bit of the cotton and put that in I didn't really like how it worked and it tended to dull the light a little bit and I really can't get a lot into these little spaces so what I decided to do was to use some more diffusion with the vellum paper but instead of putting it on top of this I wanted to leave a little bit of space because again uh, think of it like a camera lens or a telescope lens where you have one lens and then a little bit of space and another lens even that tiny bit of space between the lenses can can really change how that image is, is affected. So a similar thing, if I can have a little bit of a gap between uh, this vellum and the vellum on the, um, on the light boxes, it makes a big enough of a difference. So what I did was, I simply put some CA glue around the edge of the light box on the inside and put a piece of vellum on it. So first of all, there's a little bit of space between the SMD and the vellum, even more so on this big piece, just to, to diffuse it a little bit more and then it has to go through just a little bit more space to the other vellum in order to, um, to diffuse it properly. So let me show you here. All right, so you can still see a hot spot in the middle, but it certainly is doing a bit of a job in diffusing that light a little better. But even, even more so, when I put it on to the ceiling and I center it it's doing a whole better a much better job and it's giving me a much better even lighting on those and when I put it on these ones if I center that little hot spot right in that middle section you can barely see any of it at all sorry if that's not in frame and then when you look at it from an angle if I put it in the right position, you don't see it at all. It looks really good. So that's going to be the way to go. All right, so these are ready to go. All I have to do is um, do a little bit of light blocking around the edges of these openings, as I said. And once I'm satisfied with how that looks, I'll do one more test. And then I'll go ahead and get these 5-minute epoxied onto here. And then I can just... Once, once they're sealed with the five minute epoxy, I can just paint the whole thing black all around it. Uh, black over top of the back of the SMD so that no light is escaping at all. And it's going all down through the bottom. So, okay, so looking pretty cool. Uh, coming along well. Let me go ahead and get that uh, going and we'll get this ceiling light completed. All right, and here is the finished ceiling with the lights in it. I used quite a bit of uh, five minute epoxy to glue those little light boxes on and um, painted flat black over top of it. And there it is turned on. It tends to look like a hot spot and gives us some bluish looks to it, but it really isn't in real life. And when it's like this on an angle in the, um, in the pod bay, it looks really great. So uh, I'm not gonna show this in the pod bay just yet because I wanna finish up the other parts before I show that uh, final review of all the different parts of it. Okay. All right, so I'm working on the lights around the maintenance corridor. I don't know what the official name is, that's what I call it. The octagonal hallway that we see, the iconic hallway, that's black and white that Dave walks through. Uh, actually, they both at one point do, I think, uh, to get the A AE35 unit. So, I have to surround the entire thing with some lights, with some uh, warm white, so it will glow evenly in that little corridor, and we'll see it through the door there, the iconic image of that. Uh, and everything I've ever seen, it's, it's more of a warm white versus a cool white, so it will contrast against the, the cool white, which is in the main pod bay. So 
what I'm using because I need so many lights and I don't want to have a whole bunch of wires coming off of it is I got this string of 12 uh, chip warm SMDs all wired into one strand and uh, and there's 12 of them as you can see and so let me turn them on and I'll show you there we go it's like a Christmas tree <laughs> so there we go um, I didn't really need 12 if I wanted I could have cut some off and that would have been fine but I might as well use them so the way that I'm doing it is uh, I started with three sections on a piece of styrene that will go around three of the eight sides of it and this is just long enough uh, that it won't uh, well let me pull it off and I'll show you here hold on all right so I have these solid pieces of the resin uh, and if you want to see how I made this I did this in an, an earlier part of this uh, build uh, so this is the actual original resin part that it came with that I cannibalized in order to have something solid to glue the rest of the pieces on. So what I'm going to do, this little arrow points up to show me that that's the top. So I started with the top and I measured off this side, this side, and this side, three sides. And so this piece right here is going to glue along those three sides and go towards the wall of the pod bay. And I did it so it's just the right length so it'll butt up against this wall over here. But it's going to be solidly glued onto these three points right here so it'll be solid. It doesn't have to necessarily be glued onto the wall, but I could if I wanted to. Um, once it's on there, I could through five minute epoxy it. And, um, and so I want the lights to shine down around all of this so it gets light through all of those little openings that you can see right there because that's what actually glows with the yellow. In the actual set, they're actually wall light panels that just circle the entire tunnel every few feet and just go through the whole tunnel. So, all right, so what I've done is I used a pin vise and X-Acto knife and just like that hole right there, which I'm not gonna use, I made holes, two holes here, two here, two here, um, now I figured out because I only have 12, I don't have enough to do two on each wall. So what I'm going to do is two every other wall and one in the ones between. That would make it 12 for the eight sides of this uh, section. So uh, at first what I did was I, I tacked down the wires with some CA glue and put a little kicker on it with a toothpick. And once I got it set up so that it was on there solid enough, I went back and right now I have five and an epoxy just coating all of those lights. So they're going to be on there nice and solid. So then, as you can see, pull this off here. On the inside, the lights are shining in right there. And they're going to be plenty bright enough to light up that entire corridor once I get the other um, five sides created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to make a second one of these. It's just kind of easier to work with small pieces. I mean, eventually they'll just all be surrounded and glued on and I'll seal up the, the gap. And then what I can do is I can put some, some light blocking or just paint some black over that as well. Like I did on the roof. All right, so I'm not filming doing this because it's really hard. You wouldn't be able to see it because I'm right in up on there and just putting these on here. But I'll show you once I get these together and then we get them onto the, onto the corridor. All right. All right, so once I got that one section done, I decided because I have to keep this string together and move it around, that it would be better to glue those onto the part and then I can finish doing the wiring. So 
I did create the other parts and there's the holes for the lights as you can see they're not there's no lights in them and I glued it all onto the corridor this one side here is over to the left well the right if you're looking at it this way and um, it it had to be cut off because there is this part right here so it only comes up to here so I had to make it smaller in order to fit uh, and then I figured out where I wanted two lights and where I want one light so okay so that dried overnight and you can see the nice channel around the corridor where the lights are going to be and then um, so right now I only have the ones that I started with but you can already see how that's starting to glow it looks pretty cool all right all right, so what I'm going to do is go ahead then and finish this, this strand and put it all around it. It's kind of tricky because of the length of this wire, so I have to, like I'm doing here, wrap it up and curl it and take it over to one side and put it in a hole, then bring it back over, then take it around and just figure out how to make it work. But um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fit just nicely and light up this whole corridor. So, okay, so let me go ahead and glue down the rest of the lights. And then I'll just have to um, put some black paint to mask it and we'll be ready to get that connected to the pod bay. All right, and there is the completed, well, it's not completed, but it's all glued down. I put five minute epoxy over all of the lights and the wires. So everything's nice and secured. And just one wire coming out of the back. So again, the, um, the very convenient uh, use of string lights to put all of these 12 different LEDs but only one wire coming out because there's quite a lot of lights in this kit so I didn't need to add an additional sets of 12 leads to come out of there so let me turn that on and I'll show you how that's going to look all right so it lights up all around it nice yellow glow and there's that iconic looking yellow stripes on the sides all around it and once it's in the kit and there's not light shining around it you're going to see it a lot better it's going to look really cool and let me see here so that's the top so that's what we're going to see right there that's pretty cool all right so this is going to dry overnight and then i'm going to go ahead and get some black flat black over top of that as well like i did on the ceiling just to mask off the lights and then uh, that'll be ready to go and get attached on. A few extra little things to finish up on the uh, lab area to the left. And I'll be ready to get these two, or this in the lab, attached on to the pod bay and wrap up the pod bay. All right. All right, so I got some black painted around it looks like a burnt marshmallow <laughs> doesn't have to be pretty you're not going to see that part it's going to be behind the um the pod bay but here is the maintenance corridor looking really super sweet nice uh nice warm white glow there coming through Be able to see it from that angle and it's going to look really cool when i have the um the white lights over top of the ceiling and the lab area attached over there as well so okay so that's looking pretty sweet all i have to do is get that attached on to the back finish up the lab area and put it on the left side and we're ready to uh to wrap up this pod bay all right, so I'm finishing up the lab area. Uh, now I showed this in the first part of this video build, so I'm not gonna go over all of that again. Uh, but I had not connected in the, uh, or glued in the um, color changing SMD. So I was playing with it and um, I decided the best way for it to work were, was to use two of them. You can see the, the two sets of red and black wires coming out of the bottom there. And all I did was stick them side by side and then uh, I glued on this piece of plastic behind it 
to keep the light in and right now I have it five minute epoxied let that set up a little bit longer and then I'll paint this whole thing black uh, one other thing I decided to do was to put a little uh, white SMD a Z SMD up on the top of that ladder area you can see it right there so I'd get some white light glowing down inside just to illuminate that ladder opening so let me turn that on and I'll show you what that's gonna look like I think that turned out pretty cool and I got that five minute epoxy on there as well okay so there's the little light really cool giving that some uh, glow over there and there's the screens and the cool thing is with two of them they get out of sync real easy and then you get some distinct looking screens that appear to be changing at different rates like that bottom left one for example and because there's two of them sometimes they sync up sometimes they're way out of sync there you go so you can see it looks like real displays that are distinct and separate And it kind of fools your mind so when you're looking at it from a distance which we're going to be through that window there you're going to get the impression that they are different displays that are cycling through different colors so pretty cool all right and i really like that glow there in the ladder area i think that's pretty cool just enough illumination i didn't want the whole lab to be lit up so i didn't put anything on the ceiling Okay, so this is all done. The um, maintenance corridor is all done. So I just have to connect both of these onto the pod bay, put the roof on, that'll wrap it up. Uh, one other thing I'm doing, and I didn't really go over it too much because I'm not putting a lot of effort into it, is to paint the pod that's gonna be on the right side here. Sorry, I can't get that to focus, okay. Yeah, I'm not even going to do much on the window because it's going to be facing in. You're not going to see it. You're going to see the side. I am going to put the decals on the back and on the sides. But other than that, it's just going to be a regular pod. And that's going to be glued in here permanently right here. Okay. And then that will finish up the pod bay. And then I have the, um, the two removable pod platforms with the lit pod to go in either side as well. Okay, fantastic. All right, so I have the lab area glued in place, and I have the maintenance corridor glued on. I just have the ceiling glued on temporarily, or not glued on, taped on temporarily. But I have the whole thing together, and I have the, um, the two pods inside of it. One of the pods is going to be outside of the ship, so it's not going to be inside. And then there is the... Let me get my finger out of the way here, sorry. <laughs> All right, there is the completed pod bay. Let's kind of give you a, a little brief overview, and then I'll I'll zoom it in and get some closer looks at it. So, because it doesn't want to focus in just one area. Here we go. All right, let me go ahead and show you some close-ups. All right, so let me try to get a close-up shot of all the parts of it. And it tends to want to not focus on some areas, but uh, let's see if we can get it to work. Here's the lab area. See the little monitors there lighting up. See the ladder back there, pretty cool, a little light. You have the control there by the door that's lit up and then the workbench of course cycling through its colors little how red eye next to it and there's Dave back there walking past with his green helmet ready to deactivate how for locking him out and then the maintenance corridor of course over there on the right Looking pretty cool. Okay, both pods. All right. Come on, 
looking fantastic. And then one final shot of it just kind of held in the, in the um, command sphere. Obviously not painted or anything. And that will have a door over it so you won't see in through there, but you will see in through here. I'm not going to try to fuss with the focus. <laughs> All right, so that is the completed pod bay. Uh, quite a bit of work going into that, obviously, but uh, like I did on my original one, uh, it takes the most because of so many little parts and all the lights and everything else in there. Uh, all told, I put in, I believe, about 24 LEDs or SMDs into the pod bay alone. And then I'll have more lights in the cockpit, obviously. Uh, my original build, when I built the Discovery and lit it, took about six months, the whole ship. I spent maybe a month and a half on the ship and the rest of it was just on the interior. <laughs> so a little faster this time because I had a, a much better uh, uh, beginning to work with with the green strawberry um, resin interior, which I definitely highly recommend. Very, very nice kit. Uh, I would definitely get the fruit pack, which has all three parts and um, it's fantastic. I mean, uh, I definitely have to give credit to them for making such a fantastic kit that I could could make to look like such a realistic pod bay um, and add my talents and abilities to it. So definitely look that up if you're interested in building this model. I highly recommend it, absolutely. Um, so uh, next on, I will probably be working on the cockpit and also continuing some work on my very giant spin drift from Land of the Giants. So stay tuned. Uh, thank you to all my new subscribers and uh, lots of really cool stuff coming up. All right, thanks a lot.